Hello and welcome to our latest episode of Creeping Up the Candle. It's been quite a while since we were here, what with summer holidays and ordinations and so on. But the good news is we are back and ready to chew over what's been going on in our spiritual and holiday lives. So before I go any further, John, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lovely to be back after Mm -hmm. this summer break. And today we thought that we will change the theme And today's episode will be an interview to Mary. (laughs) Mary, uh, I will be asking you some questions Mm -hmm. uh, about your recent experience at Greenbelt. Yes. So, uh, without further ado, Mm -hmm. let's get on with it. Tell us, Mary. Tell us, what's Greenbelt? What's Greenbelt? Well, Greenbelt is a Christian festival, so it's one of the the staples of our summer holidays. Um, There are various Christian festivals on various points up the candle, but I think it's probably fair to say that Greenbelt pretty much falls off the candle and defies (laughs) (laughs) any of our usual, you know, um, there's a a youth pilgrimage to Walsingham, which would be very high up the candle. There's things like um, Spring Harvest and New Wine, which I've never experienced, but um, I'm more towards the evangelical side. Um, And Greenbelt positions itself somewhere off the candle in terms of living out gospel values. I think its original thing was a Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other. Interesting. And what's their ethos? Their ethos is um, they are a Christian festival who care about all of God's creation. So they are very eco-minded. They're very keen to make life fairer for those who society possibly doesn't always include. So there's a lot of work with the Amos Trust um, and various charities that work with homeless people um so yeah basically it's a christian grounded organization it's got lots of music lots of arts things and underlying that is its desire to live out the gospel values is it ecumenical oh yes very much so um yeah the denominations don't really come into it It, it's very much christians doing their thing um and if there's any Division, no, division is the wrong word, but categorization going on, it's by theme. So are you a climate person? Are you a justice person? Are you a music person? And that's how the venues are split up rather than by denomination. And uh, who organises Grimbell? Do you know, I'm not entirely sure, but I knew you were going to ask, so I had to Google. <laughs> uh, and there's basically a, a set of trustees. It started off in the 1970s as a, an evangelical music festival, and it's grown um, and now it's a very inclusive festival, which brings in partnerships with the Methodist Church and the United Reforms and the Quakers and, and all sorts of organisations. Christian Aid is another huge one. That's brilliant. And tell us about the setup for some of us who never been in mm. Grimbelt and have no idea about the experience. What is the setup and w- where does it happen? What's the setup and, and what's on offer? Uh, during the festival yeah so it's uh, camping john camping <laughs> <laughs> it's possibly the reason john's never been but um so actually that's not true so the basic setup is it's in a set of fields behind Borton house in kettering in northamptonshire i think mm-hmm. i put it in the sat nav and the sat nav takes me it's like four hours drive from here um and It's a three-day festival, so there are events happening all over the bank holiday weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And to get the most out of it, I reckon you need to camp. Um, But people, obviously, who can't do that, there are options to come in just for the day. So there there are various fields. There's a a normal camping field. There's a glamping field. You could maybe stretch to that. Glamping? Glamping. What's glamping? It's where you get, like, a a nicer tent and they put it up for you. Oh, well. So still no showers. Just. No showers. Just. No showers. Well, then, no. (laughs) Um, You can. You can book a slot in the showers. It's all, it can be civilised. Sorry, so there's normal camping, there's glamping, there's people who stay in hotels nearby and come in for the day, uh, and there's a caravan and camper van field. So um, basically you, you make your own accommodation, but the festival is planned pretty much with an aim to those who can get there first thing in the morning, um, and it goes on, as my kids discovered, well after midnight. So... And just to clarify it, it's yes. end of August. End of August, it's always yeah, bank holiday. Bank holiday, uh, August. Bank Put it on for my birthday, which is good of them. And what's on offer uh, in the setting on all those uh, 
Bastille. <laughs> so this, the site is organised into a series of different venues, mainly in huge big marquees. Um, and the, the main stage, because it is a music festival, I mean a Christian music festival. So the main stage has got the big acts on it. Um, and there is like a little folky country acoustic tent called the Canopy. Um, and there are various tents around the site in which there are talks or acts or whatever arranged by theme. So Hot House addresses climate emergency. The shelter is one of my favourites. It's where the obviously Christian stuff goes on. I mean, it's all gospel values, but the shelter is where the sort of the devotional stuff. So Teze happens and um, uh, various people who want to talk specifically about biblical issues and things. Um, the Pagoda is another of my favourites where people go and talk about sort of the heavier issues. That's where Rowan Williams was. And um, so, yeah, that's interesting talks and poetry and so on. Um, what else is there? There's a playhouse which has got a set of um, visual arts as well. So we've seen juggling there. There've been mag magicians uh, for the kids and lots of humour, lots of comedy. Um, so basically... You can either approach Greenbelt in terms of wandering and doing a little bit of everything, or you can find what you want to go for. So if it's the music, you would go to the Glade. Um, if you're there for the politics and debate, you go to the Pagoda. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it covers everything. Well, it sounds like they have a great offer. Yes. It? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. And lots of activities going on mm -hmm. on the day. And it also sounds like it's very much addressed to all ages. Yeah, it's... Oh, yeah, so there's also Tadar, which is the children's tent. Uh -huh. um, and there's an engine, which is a youth tent as well, which tends... I think the youth tent's a bit more free and easy, um, but it does have programming, including a series of cake and debate, which... Oh my kids have very much enjoyed over the years uh so yes and there's something not just for all ages but for all interests so you and i could go mm -hmm. y you could go to the i will be in the shelter yes you will <laughs> i chapel it sounds like yeah uh, yes oh so there's also um side tents so there's franciscans have got a tent right you would like it there mm -hmm. um and wild goose the iona community I'm a big fan of. Yes. They, they've got a wild goose tent. Um, so not only is it different ages, but it's lots of different people. So my entire family can go and we can all have a wonderful time. But it will have looked very different for all of us. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. And is there a theme that runs through uh, through the festival? And is the theme different every year, if there is a theme? Yeah, I mean, the ethos, I think we've said, is very inclusive. Mm -hmm. So lots of... Um, uh, yeah, climate stuff, LGBTQ, um, all sorts of people who the church may previously have marginalised. Greenbelt is very keen to actively include everyone and, and kind of proudly say, look, we include people and here is a, a space for you. Um, so I can't remember what the question was. I went off so about the theme. And, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. so, so there is a theme. So there's partly Greenbelt's overarching thing mm -hmm. which is we include everyone yeah um and there is a different theme so this year it was dream on dream on so the talks were loosely based on dream on but the um the themes are so broad that they're very widely interpreted so it's not like you go to a festival and you're like i'm learning about such and such but mm -hmm. it's i guess it's just a spark for people to base their talks and their acts and their music on and in a way, you you answered my next question, really. <laughs> uh, is it only for Christians and the workshops and what's on offer? Is it only about God and religion? Or, but then you already answered this question, but I will ask anyway. <laughs> ask, that's, no, that's a good question. Is it only about God? I mean, mm -hmm. I have come so you'll have life in all its fullness. Do, do we have to be specifically talking about God for it to be about God? I would say not. Um, but... Yeah, no, um, you could go and people I know have gone with partners or family who aren't Christian, who have engaged with the playhouse and the music and so on without having to go to a talk which specifically mentions God. I mean, I love it because you can organise your life around. There are some Bible study stuff. I, I, John Bell did some wonderful talks uh -huh. this year. Um, and then you can also go to ones which don't identify as Christian. They had. I'm trying to remember the name of the guy. Last year they had what my kids termed an atheist and a priest debating. <sighs> anyway, the name will come back to me. But certainly the talks aren't all by Christians and those Christian talks which there are portray a very wide spectrum from 
you know, the Quakers had a, a stall this year which was designed to make you think. Um, and obviously they are God-based, but God was never mentioned. All the way up to you know, worship bands, Wild Goose, uh, organised evening and morning prayer with the Franciscans and so on. Um, so no, you could absolutely, if you were worried about having to engage overtly with God, you could go and make that festival just about going to the music. Um, even though for those of us who do have faith, it, it, there are plenty of opportunities to engage in that as well. So Sunday morning, or at least an hour of Sunday morning, is still kept for worship. So um, there's a communion service, you'd be pleased to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, probably not communion as you would understand it. Probably not. No, I think but... I sent you some photos this mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. You did? Mm-hmm. Um, but so there is there are two communion services on offer on a Sunday morning and there's no other programming between 10 and 11. Um, obviously, you're more than welcome to stay in your tent or wander or, or, or not engage um, or, or go. There's the cafes and stuff are still open. So the main communion service is on the huge glade field. There are literally thousands of people sharing communion. Um, and this year, the sermon was from Palestinian Christians. So they zoomed in from Bethlehem to talk to us um, and the whole thing was themed so we were invited we all settled ourselves down because it's huge field and the first hour of sunday morning is spent finding your friends that you came with because it's it's mad and we all just got settled we had our picnic blankets down and the first thing they invited us to do is to stand up and move and mm. um, not lose the children you're with um and it really did bring home the message of uh, what the people who were going to be doing the sermon had been living with um, so, so we did that, didn't lose anyone. And uh, so that's one option for communion. Um, there's also a quiet communion for people who are not into huge big tents and so on. I imagine there were plenty of people because the programming didn't finish till about one or two who were still in their tents. Um, and I think there's an option for Catholic mass, but I don't, I've never explored that. That might be better. So, um, so yes, although you, uh, loads of people do go either who aren't Christians or who are having trouble with church, that, that one hour on a Sunday morning is still a, a Christian. Reserved for worship. Yeah, perhaps. absolutely, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, by no means no one's kind of ticking off that yeah. there are so many people there. You, you can do whatever you want. But yes, in terms of programming, that's the, the hour, yeah. How many times have you been to Grimbell? Not that often, so I'm a bit of a late adapter. Mm-hmm. There, there are people whose you know, first Christian experiences were there when they were 15 and now they're as old as me and they're still going. Um, and there's certainly a group of people for whom Greenbelt is their retreat, their church. Um, but we started going because our kids are quite well spread out. Um, I think Greenbelt works well because there's the tent for the children but you do stay with them, so you need to be very organised as parents or a family team to make sure that you get to the talks you want to and the kids do their thing. So partly because of that, we didn't really go until the kids were old enough um, to be engaged with a talk. So anyway, six or seven years, I think, is the short answer to what you asked. Um, so, But it's been running for 50 years, so there are... Some people who genuinely been there from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Well established, mm-hmm. it sounds. Yeah. Now, a couple of questions a bit more personal about your experience at Green Belt mm-hmm. uh, and what do you get out of, your, of that experience. What is the reason or reasons uh, that you want to go back for these last six years that you've been? What's taken me back? It's, yeah. uh, it's what church should be, she said, looking at John. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we are all very interested to hear. Of what church should be. It's, I think, well, partly it's a, a, a lovely weekend in which all of the family are happy. So that's wonderful. There's something for everybody. Um, but I think the fact that it's people living out the gospel values, it just makes me happy to go to a field and see literally thousands of people who understand Christianity. I, I imagine not all the same way as I do, but people who say this is our faith and it is spurring us on to act in certain ways. Um, and I think if, if I were beginning church mm-hmm. myself, that is exactly what I'd like blueprint. There'd be a lot of kind of Bible input, a lot of worship and a lot of action um, spurred on by, by what Jesus teaches. And I see it there in Greenbelt. Um, and also lots of friends go, so 
I meet up with people for coffee, and that's lovely. So Many good reasons yes. to, to, to go back to Grimbelt. And the most important one, beer and hymns, mm. which is a um, turn-up. It used to be at the pub at the Jesus Arms, um, but it got so big. <laughs> Jesus Arms. <laughs> Jesus Arms. What's that? This is why we don't need to be a podcast, so you can see John's. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's just a pub on site, but uh-huh. um, you know how people have big pub signs outside, mm-hmm. so the tent is just a beer t- a pub tent, and it's called the Jesus Arms. It's got a lovely picture Brilliant. of Jesus on the headboard. Brilliant name. Yes. Um, so it started off there, but this year it had grown too big, so it went to one of the bigger tents. Um, and it literally is turn up and sing hymns from, rousing hymns that you remember from the, your childhood. Um, I, and certainly some of my friends have been like, you know, I would come to Greenbelt just for the beer and hymns. Um, so it's an excuse to sing those hymns which want to be really sung whilst waving your glasses in the air. Um, mm-hmm. And how does the experience at Greenbelt fit with the rest of your life and ministry? Not as much as I'd like it to, mm-hmm. I think, is honestly the answer. So I always come back from Greenbelt going, right. This year, I'm going to be braver about being more inclusive and I'm going to, you know, act more. and I'm going to be live my life like, you know, these people who have refugees at home. There's a whole tent uh, devoted to that this year. Um, and I suppose even though my ministry doesn't look like Greenbelt, it does mean that I kind of come back more determined to do uh, that sort of thing. And also it, it sort of affirms the fact that I'm not the only person feeling like that um which certainly isn't the case in Paris. Like, there are loads of people i think you know um who who think like that but there's just something about it which makes me go right um i've sort of drifted and what i should be doing is being more involved with community stuff and um being more conscious of how much my actions are affecting the environment and all that sort of jazz so you can see a positive impact of your experience at Green, at Greenbelt regarding your ministry. I think so. Mm. And you've enjoyed the fact that I brought beer and hymns back. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. I think anywhere you go, where, which is affirming of your beliefs, it does kind of um, stook, stook you up to, to do more in, in the, the normal world. That's brilliant. Thank you, Mary. And let's go back a bit more about the festival mm. uh, and, and, and its, its ethos. Uh, it, would you say that Greenbelt is only for liberal Christians? Mm, um, no, well, I think we've said already it's not just for Christians because you, you, yeah. can, you can. Um, I don't, as a liberal Christian, it suits me very well. Um, I think if you were to turn up to Greenbelt with differing views um, and we're up for a debate. Most people there would be well and truly up for chatting to you about how they see Christianity and why they live the way they are. So, and it's unmistakably a liberal Christian um, event because it's so inclusive. So you, you see around you um, events happening which might not happen in more conservative settings uh, and you see people living out you're free to be themselves and dress however they want. And, and so maybe if you were less liberal, you might find that. I don't know. It depends if you were a, a conservative who was up for being challenged. Um, but certainly there are no entrance requests. You don't have to sign up to a statement of faith and say, I'm a liberal Christian. Don't worry, I'm not that high up the candle. It's fine. <laughs> um, and it welcomes everyone. Basically, you're welcome to turn up. I think, though, if you started suggesting more conservative views you would meet people who would be very happy to challenge you um and yeah um but i think when it says it's inclusive it means it so literally everybody is welcome thank you and in a more broader term or wider term Mm -mm. what do you think is the impact of greenbelt for the whole church i think there you quite often hear at greenbelt people who are haven't found a home in a church outside of greenbelt so they haven't found a regular congregation to begin belong to. So in that sense, I think it's keeping some people engaged in the life of the church, even if it is only once a year, in a way that they might otherwise just drift and believe that uh, all churches were 
conservative and not for them. Um, but I suppose that's how that affects them. And I think I know lots of ministers who go and we all kind of say this is how we'd like the church to be. So hopefully it impacts the church in terms of warming up those of us who feel like that and sending us back into the church to be a presence. Um, and even just the fact that Greenbelt exists is a, a testament to people who believe in, in activism for the church. I mean, there are a lot of people there who maybe wouldn't identify as churchy um, or who are struggling with the conventional church. So possibly they can be the grit that makes the church reconsider its position. Um, I think the church is uh, all pl- all institutions are in danger of being an echo chamber. Um, probably my Greenbelt friends mm-hmm. <laughs> were also a, an echo chamber, but to have that particular part as, as uh, that particular thing as part of the makeup of Christianity, I think is vital. Um, and then it impacts people like you. Mm-hmm. I come back and tell you all about... All the brilliant ideas. I have some very good ideas that we could do this year, John. I mean, I must say, you are a really good advocate for Greenbelt <laughs> and for the course, uh, which is really good. And what I hear, uh, you know, truly welcoming, truly inclusive, mm-hmm. uh, everyone welcome, whoever you are, uh, and, and come as you are, as it were. Mm. And I, I am, yeah, it sounds really interesting, the fact of justice yeah. uh, as well. And that's something that sometimes you don't hear as much, social justice, that mm-hmm. Christians would speak up for what is right and, yeah. and for the for justice and peace. Uh, mm-hmm. So those are, I think, very relevant. Yeah. And, it, and I can see the change and positive impact in in mm-hmm. you and, and I think in your in your ministry. Yeah, yeah. I think the social justice thing's interesting, isn't it? Because um, as well as the venues, there's a series of stalls, as it were, um, not selling stuff, but selling ideas. So Christian Aid have got a stall. Mm-hmm. Amos Trust, who do work with um, prison reform and, and rehabilitation of prisoners. The Refugees at Home had one. Um, Citizens for UK, which again, I don't know if that's specifically Christian or not. I mean, Greenbelt wouldn't care. We shouldn't care. But very much, it's not just a um, let's preach a lovely sermon and inspire people, but it's a here are the people on the ground. Oh, there's loads of um, the Palestinian... Sabeel Palestine um, uh, had had a stall. Um, does it Christian? Yes, it's Christian age got a whole tent. So, so yeah, the social justice stuff is, is big, um, and just inspirational sort of chatting to people who go, oh, "I work for this charity" or whatever, um, and people who've been out and and lived what we're preaching mm-hmm. um, is definitely yeah the gospel in action. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing all your thoughts about the experience at Greenbells. And just to summarise, mm-hmm. and maybe to the last question for this uh, m- mini interview. Uh, <laughs> it has been, yes. It's been a bit of an interview this time, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Mary's been talking. I haven't been correcting. You haven't. Everyone's going to be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mary, yes, using John. three words, three words, how would you describe your recent experience at Greenbelt? Three words. Three. I'm only... Have you ever known me be limited to three words? Have a go. Have a go. Um, Feels like an interview question, doesn't it? Um, I suppose refreshing. So I went... (laughs) It's not refreshing to sleep in a tent for three days. I'm sure it isn't. Uh, It's certainly not refreshing. that. So this year I took um, some of my children and some of their friends as well. So, I mean, they're lovely and they were really good. And when I said come in at midnight whatever DJ set or whatever they'd been to. Um, uh, There's one, they went to the Glitter Ball. (laughs) Uh, And I was getting all sorts of texts. It's starting late. We're we're not going to be able to go. But anyway, they were great. Um, And they did come back at midnight, but the sun rises at six. So (laughs) it was not physically refreshing, but it was spiritually refreshing. Um, So refreshing? Refreshing. first one? You said three words, didn't you? (laughs) (laughs) We're getting there. Good. Refreshing. Refreshing. Um, and it, it's something about, it's affirming because it's, affirming. Mm-hmm. yeah, there are uh, it result, it results of 
what I feel about Christianity and also there are people there who agree with me. So, that, so that's wonderful. Um, and it's also brilliant to see, even though like the glitter ball might not be my thing, um, and uh, certainly a lot of the, the music I'd never heard of because I'm an old fuddy-duddy, um, but that I can go and listen to the Wild Goose stuff um, is, is definitely affirming. Oh, <laughs> that's... Uh, in terms of the stuff that you choose to do, so someone I spoke to said it's that they felt that at Greenbelt they just went to the stuff which affirmed what they believed and they'd been trying to challenge themselves. This isn't someone I know, but mm-hmm. you queue a lot in Greenbelt. And mm-hmm. So a lot of yeah. chances to have a conversation yes. with people. Yeah, my daughter's like, mum has got a new best friend. <laughs> um, so she'd been challenging herself to go to different things. Mm-hmm. And this time when it rained... I was desperate to get out of the rain. Um, and so I went to a talk on Welsh hymn tunes, uh-huh. which I would never have gone to, but it was genuinely one of the best things I did. Um, it was someone who'd reclaimed, or she got recordings of like people singing Welsh hymn tunes and um, created a backing track to go with them and then brought them into the 21st century. She was brilliant. Anyway, affirming. And so affirming not just for me, but in terms of other people doing their thing and the fact you can see crowds of people knowing that that's their niche um, mm-hmm. rather than everyone being squashed into a sausage machine. So, so refreshing, affirming. You're doing well. Uh-huh. Yes, Mari, three words. It, life, life-giving. It's a hyphenated word. Mm-hmm. Oh, we yeah. counted in. Life-giving. Life-giving. Mm-hmm. I think definitely in terms of, um, yeah, I feel much more ready to come and have more great ideas. Mm-hmm sure you're excited about. Yeah, mm-hmm. Very much so. Um, but yeah, it, it makes you feel more alive. So there we go, three words. Refreshing, affirming and life-giving. Thank you so much. You have given us a lot to think about. And I don't know about you listeners, but um, you almost convinced me uh, to come <laughs> to Greenbell. So you've done a, a wonderful job. You could stay in the hotel nearby. Oh, I would stay in a hotel. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. <laughs> With showers and things. I'm sweet. Uh, yes, yes, that's quite useful. <laughs> thank you so much, Mary, that's quite for, all right. for your answers, your honesty. And thank you all for listening to our episode and podcast. And just to remind you, we will be back sooner this time Mm -hmm. with our next episode which will be about curacy yes it's the one that we were going to do before i came back bouncing with green belt that's right stuff Um, it will be that curates are not just an extra curate is not just an extra pair of hands hands. so so we're going to have a think about how you train me and how much i burden oh not at all (laughs) refreshing Um, and life-giving and affirming that's the one definitely Yes, so um, again, if you've got any questions, we've got our email address creepingupthecandle at gmail.com. I may set up an alternative falling off the candle one. <laughs> um, so yeah, creepingupthecandle at gmail.com. Please email us with any thoughts or questions you'd like us to address. Uh, and I think... Don't forget to subscribe. Yes. And tell all your friends the... about our podcast. Yes, indeed. So I think all that remains for us to say, John, is the Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Creeping Up the Candle. We hope you enjoyed it. If so, please follow us and we'll be back with another episode very soon. And last but by no means least, thank you so much to Kevin and Estelle Holland for providing the music.